Hey beauties, welcome back to Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. I am your host, Sherry Ricard. I'm a medical professional, business leader, author, speaker, and adversity recovery expert, bringing you fascinating guests, business, beauty, and lifestyle tips to help you create a beautiful life and always committed to keeping it real. Now let's dive in. My guest today will set your soul on fire. She was a finalist and fan favorite on X Factor and also received one of the rare standing ovations from Simon Cowell. She has been a lead on Broadway. She is a beautiful woman inside and out. She's a philanthropist. She has toured the world sharing her talent of music with incredible singers and creative artists. She is taking a break from writing her book that will be released in 2021 to share with us on Real Girl Talk, her journey. Hello, Stacy. Thank you so much for having me. I am, you know, so excited. We were talking about before we started recording how God is so instrumental in people's lives. And if That's you will just allow him to take you on the journey that he has for you. It doesn't mean you have to take away what your dreams are and what your actual destiny is or what you think it is, but he may not take you on the journey the way you think he will to get you to the same place of your dreams right. and, and your goals, right? So I want you to, right. to tell us a little bit. You're 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 such a powerhouse in a gift Thank you. of talent. I mean, Thank your, you. your voice, I mean, you're a finalist on X Factor, right? But that is like way down here to what the talent is for you because you're singing and you're an actress and you're a speaker and you have so much to share and so much to offer for those that feel like you are on a level that they can't actually see. I want you to take us yeah. on the journey of how it started. Okay. So I started, I'm a preacher's kid. I started in the Christian church in Brooklyn, New York. Here you um, go. <laughs> and you know, when you hear me sing, you might hear a little bit of that in me. <laughs> uh-huh. I was so much, somebody was like, you know, you, you did Purple Rain on X Factor. You sang like a gospel record, you know? And it's funny because that song, when they told me how to do, I did, I did X Factor. And when they told me I had to do Purple Rain, I kind of, I kind of cringed a little bit because I was like, oh no, you know, because I had watched the X Factor in the UK and everybody that sang Purple Rain would get sent home. And I was just like, Ugh, I don't want to do that song, right? And um, and so I I looked up the words "Purple Rain." I was like, "What does it even mean? What did Prince mean when he wrote that song?" And "Purple Rain" actually means God's love raining down on you. Wow. So I never meant to cause any sorrow. I never meant to cause any pain. I only want to see God's love raining down on you. So if you listen to that song with that viewpoint, I kind of made it a gospel record. So if you go to YouTube and you see that record, me, me hearing that, you hear me singing that song, it turns into that kind of song, right? Wow. Where I only want to see God's love raining down on you. And I, I brought that up because that's kind of where I sing from. That's kind of where I move from at this point in my life. Yeah. But unfortunately, as I grew up, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I grew up in a very competitive industry. I was singing professionally at 16 years old wow. in, off, in an off-Broadway show. When I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I was doing that, and there was a lot of competition around me. There were people that I felt were equal to me and better. And mm. I had to kind of try to measure up to that. Sure. And this, that's good and bad because what happens is as a child, when you try to reach that goal, it's good because it pushes you to be great, but then it's bad because you don't realize how great you are, mm. you know? And as women, you know, as a woman, I was telling my daughter this morning, she's 10 years old. I was telling her, you can't seek to be liked and admired. Like you can't look for the approval of other people, but as an mm. artist, that's very hard. Right. And for me, I lived my life always seeking the approval of others. Like, please like me, please like my voice, please like the way I look. And I always, you know, sometimes I felt like I was squishing myself too Mm -hmm. and suppressing myself because I didn't want to be too pretty because seeing have all this stuff. And like, I was always apologizing for what God had blessed me to be and who he had blessed me to, you know, what he had blessed me to do. And so I would overeat so I could be fat. You know, it's just like, I want people to like me, right? Right. And so on that journey, I had a very close relationship with the Lord. I was always seeking God, seeking God. I always wanted to do what God wanted me to do, but I was always very afraid as well because I felt like he gave me so much and I just could not, I couldn't figure out how to please God and 
how to follow my dreams. Right. Because I felt like there was a very early calling on my life to go into ministry, but I was scared. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I had messed up too much. There was too many boys. There was too much kissing. There was too much hiding right. that I was having sex when I shouldn't have been having sex. Like all of this stuff that right. I would feel so condemned about, you know? And so yeah. now, several years later, after I've done Broadway, I, I started on Broadway. I started on the London's West End. I yeah. had albums on Warner Brothers Records, two albums. On, I've started on TV. I've done movies. And a lot of people don't even know that. It's because I was always kind of hiding myself as well as trying to be out there. You can't do that. No. <laughs> as right. women, we, you just, you know, as women, I always, you know, I, and then I was in abusive relationships. I was always pulling in guys that were telling me I wasn't good enough. And it's really funny because now when I look at it at this point in my life, and I think I said this to you off camera, yeah. it's like, you don't know like why you go through all of that until you go through all of that pain and you can look back and, it's, and you can go, oh, you know what? I can inspire you. I can use this in my music, in my story, in the books that I write, in the conversations that I have to inspire another woman to be great and say, hey, Absolutely. don't do that. I went down that journey. And so God is using me in the ministry he wanted to use me in 20 years ago. He's right. actually using me. And I'm trying to say, don't, don't waste time. Don't waste 20 years like I did. Let me give you a shortcut. Right. <laughs> and the shortcut is, loving yourself, loving God, you know, being, being willing to help others, being, being willing to endow even yourself with this confidence that you need to survive in life. Mm -hmm. And we are, we're women. We always want to, you know, we just want to kind of play down who we are. Some of us are, you know, very confident in our walk and some of us are afraid because it's like, wow, right. You know, it's just too much. If, will I come off too arrogant? Will I come off too conceited? If I, if I really truly walk in my power, Right. Mm. And so I now go, hey, walk in your power. Don't apologize for your beauty. Don't right. apologize for your talent. Walk in that. Use that to help another person. Insp mm. Use that to inspire other people. You know what right. I mean? And so I'm telling you when I feel like I've been through hell and back again, I've cried many nights and there's been things that I just don't understand. I can look now at my life and say, you know what, God, I, I understand. I might not have liked the route that you took me down, right. but I'm alive. I'm healthy. I have a beautiful family. I, you know, I'm thriving now and I feel more confident now in myself than I ever have Wow. ever in my life. And I can be, I can be present and I can speak of the goodness of God in a way that I never could before. You know, and sometimes You're it's like, have you know, me crying right listen, now, Stacey. <laughs> listen, I'm telling you, uh, but I'm telling you, babe, if you, sometimes if you don't want to listen, God is going, you might have to go through some stuff right. until he gets your attention. And I'm saying, yep. just listen from the beginning, just yep. go from the beginning. Like, you know, we talked about this too, like COVID took a lot of us to this level. We should have been operating from, from the beginning. Exactly. We should have been all the stuff that we were pushed to do, starting a podcast, started writing a book, all the things that we should, we were doing, doing now, we should have been doing before. But sometimes when you're pushed into fear and you lost everything, you have nowhere to go. You between right. that rock, you're like, whoa, you have to, God pushes you to, into a place of right. discomfort. For you to come out and go, okay, I got it, God. It's okay. I hear you. I'm going to do what you want me to do now. You right. know, and I'm telling you, I had to let go of some stuff. I had to let go of some people. I had to let go of my own awful thoughts of myself. Yeah. I had to let go of the judgment of myself because I made mistakes and my, my mistakes became super, super public. Yeah. You know, and I got super, super attacked and it wasn't about my talent anymore. I had to say, you know what? Wow. It became about what religion that I wanted to seek or look into. It became about who I was dating. It became about a fight that I got into somebody. It, it became everything else about my singing, the other than my singing and right. about my inspirational story. And right. I had to sit with myself and I had to say to myself, why is it this kind of attention that I'm getting? The dark victim attention. What can I change within myself to change this to something that could actually help somebody? And so during COVID, I fed 130,000 people. Mm. I started two nonprofits, one in South Africa, one here. I started writing my book. I started looking and stopped condemning myself for my mistakes and listening to other people telling me that that's who I was. Right. You know what I mean? I stopped doing that. And I said, you know what? I, I have something inside of me. I have a story to tell. And there's some flaws and there's some, some mess ups that I made, but I'm not the only one. Other people right. mess up too. 
Right. So I'm not going to crawl into a hole and hide now because I made mistakes and be quiet and suppress myself and say, no, I'm not going to speak out anymore. No, I'm not going to do that. And I, and that's right. kind of where I was for a long time. Here's the thing too, Stacey, I truly believe in my heart that how powerful of a being can you be on earth for God to have the enemy attack you as hard as he is. Now, now hear me yeah. out because God yeah. will step back, right? He will step back and allow whatever's happening. That he will turn that around for yes. good in some yes. way. So because yes. you're not, you weren't listening, you weren't listening and you weren't paying attention. So he had to step back and allow where you were protected. And maybe you were invisible to the enemy. You know, the, the Bible talks about God making you invisible to the enemy, he made you invisible. But when he made you invisible to the enemy, you weren't walking in the light that he had for you. You were doing wow. the desires of your heart without God. Yes. In so what he did is he lifted that curtain. Now you weren't invisible yes. to the enemy anymore. Yes. You were visible right. to the enemy. And he saw, wow, what a powerful threat you are. So let me do this. Let me do this. Wow. And then he can look yes. up at God and say, watch, she'll fold after this one. She'll go yes. against you after this one. But wow. instead, wow. what you did That's was you, stuff. you put your foot down and you said, oh no, oh no, devil. You're yeah. not going to get me right in. here. You're not going to get me I right here. In. And then God can step back and go, I told you. Told you she wouldn't fold. Yes. Told you yeah, she no, I dug in even more. And then what happens, I, as you start seeking God and doing the, what he asked you to do in your walk, he shuts that curtain again. So now you're invisible to the enemy. So you said you're yeah. thriving and you're doing all this because he can't, the enemy can't see you anymore. You're invisible to the enemy. So that way God <laughs> can thrive, right? Yes. So now yes. you're thriving and you're thriving at a level. And I think a lot of times, not just as women, but us as people, what we do is we step back and we allow the enemy when they attack us to just say, well, where is God in all of this? Yes. Well, where is God? Yeah. How can they take Stacy Francis, somebody so talented and so powerful that has the ability, the financial ability and the mindset ability and physical ability to do all of these things that the heat, the devil can take that person and shed darkness on, on her reputation, on her journey. Yeah. What could yes. the devil do to me? Which is what yeah. you don't understand is if you would just stand fast and be steadfast and just dig your heels in the sand and say, oh no, you're not going to touch me with this one. A lot of people thought, not that I should have, but a lot of people thought that I may not recover from the death of my son. How can you? And when I say recover, I have to preface it by saying not ever get over, but you can still recover. So I believe yes. that you know, adversity recovery specialist to me and what my certification is in that is that you can recover from your adversities, but it doesn't mean that you're going to forget them. It doesn't mean that you're ever going to get over the death of a yes. loved one, especially your child as moms. It just yes. means that that can be used in a way to where it sh you will understand. God will reveal to me the purpose in it. And I'm going to see him again, right? So God yeah, yeah. will reveal the purpose to me. And I believe that if we would be vulnerable in that, but as women, like you said, we, we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to show our yeah. beauty. We want to step back. Yeah. We want to be a little timid in things because yes. if we do that, then people will like us. You know, we yes. won't have women jealous. And there's a lot of responsibility in that. There is a lot of responsibility. So I want you to take us a little bit on, on that journey. What has come against you? Because, you know, we, oh. I, I know that the, the, <laughs> the, the media, you have been shed a light in the media, but I want you to first give us a little bit of tidbit because I purposely, as I told you, I didn't want to research that and read about it. I wanted you yeah. to tell us what has happened to you in the media. And I want you to also tell us the real story because the enemy lies and uses those people to lie. So yeah. I want you to tell us what has been used and the lie in that and how you yeah. are thriving from that right now. Well, that's a pretty intense question. And, you know, to be honest with you, it's not something that I like to answer anymore because it's from 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, but you ask and I'll be direct. Um, 
when I was on the X Factor, when I came off the X Factor, I was obviously at the top of my career and I was getting a, I had a lot of visibility and I was Stacy from the X Factor. And at that point it was like, Stacy that saying Purple Rain on the, you know, it was like really, right. really um, a high place for me. I had 20 million people watching me for three months. So I was very well known in the industry and in the world at that point. Right. Um, I had come against a lot of great attack when I was on the X Factor because people were saying that I had already had success and I lied and said I didn't have success. And I was thinking to myself, well, I didn't have a, you didn't know me. I didn't have a household name and it didn't really right. matter the other stuff I had done. I wasn't Whitney Houston. I wasn't Mariah Carey. I wasn't Beyonce, right. you know? So it's just like, why is this attack? And it was a heavy attack. It was like, oh, she's a liar. She has success. Everybody knows her. And I was just kind of like, what? Like I was in a girl group. i had never had a solo album. It was just like, as many people as they could were trying to pull out as much bad she's a liar and she's she's this and it was just crazy right and i was just watching this and i i was succumbing to the pain of that because i wanted like i said i wanted everybody to like me so um that was happening and i just i couldn't even think with it because you know it's funny because i saw someone in, in the uk recently and he was like well stacy I did feel like it wasn't true because we all did know you in New York and you were doing well on Broadway. And I was like, I wasn't world renowned. I wasn't like, right. you know, I wasn't what I wanted to be. You know what I mean? But sometimes I have to take, I have to take responsibility for why people saw it as a lie. Let me tell you why, because I was diminishing my success. I was diminishing mm. that I had started on Broadway. I, I was diminishing that I had started on Broadway, that I was in a girl group on Warner Brothers Records, and we did have two albums. I was comp I was diminishing that I did work with Prince, and I sang back up for Aretha Franklin, and I was diminishing all that, because to me, in my universe and in my mind, it wasn't where I wanted to go. Right. Right. So I it. it was kind of like, you know, other people were like, whoa, that's big. And she's on X Factor saying she didn't have success, because I was looking at this level of success that's way bigger than the average person. And I was mm. invalidating them. And I was right. invalidating my journey. Right. And I had to really sit with myself one day and say, well, can I see how they could think I was a liar? And I was like, actually, I can see that because the things that I had done in some people's eyes were mega successful. Right. It just wasn't the level of success that I found successful, which brought right. me to another conclusion. Success, your definition of success might be different than mine. Right. My definition of success could be, I won 20 Grammy Awards. I'm on every world stage and everybody in their house knows me. Mm. Maybe it wasn't in my mind, you know, and it was horrible that I thought that way because it made me really, really not ever acknowledge how God had blessed me in my mm. life. You understand mm -hmm. because oh, I was absolutely. I was on the, I was on that stage. Yes, I was on that stage going. No, I didn't have success, and everybody was like, "What do you mean? Of course you did. You saw it on Broadway. You did this. You did that. You." And I was kind of like, "Well, it wasn't what I wanted. It right. wasn't the success that I expected to have." Right. So I can understand other people's viewpoint, and I think when that happened for me, I set myself free because I was able to go. You know what? I did have success, and I am successful. Right. Don't beat yourself up anymore, Stacey. Stop diminishing yourself, right? So right. that's the first thing. That was very hard for me. And since then, I do look at myself and go, okay, good. I am successful. And it's hard because people message me and go, oh, I, you know, it's so sad that you didn't achieve this. And I think to myself, it's sad for who? Why is that sad? Like the things that I've done have been great, right? But people have this different bar, they said. You know, and if you right. set a high bar for yourself, fine, but don't invalidate the other bars you've reached. You know what I mean? Right. So that's kind of what happened. And then I was invited to sing at a Grammy party and Whitney Houston was there. And um, unfortunately, I got into a little bit of an argument with her. And it, the next day after that, it just hit the media and it went crazy that I had a fight with Whitney Houston. And, and then sadly, the day after that, she passed away. Ah. <gasps> uh. So that was Thursday night I met her. We got into a little bit of a spat. Friday, it hit the media. Saturday, she was gone. And I, when I tell you my world turned upside down, it was mm. just kind of like the most devastating thing. Because then you have Oprah Winfrey and all these, the media and all these people speculating and saying what it was and it wasn't. And I was just kind of like trending on Twitter and people were like the dark messages of, you killed Whitney Houston. And I mean, when I tell you it went crazy and I just... 
it broke me down in a way that I would never have expected. Like I had, I, had it not been for my children and my strong faith in God, I really don't believe I'd be here today. Like I will, really, then people were like reporting that I was in the Betty Ford's and I've never seen cocaine. And like, I've never, I don't even know what cocaine looked like. And they were reporting <laughs> that I was in the, like, yeah. I really, no, honestly, I don't, I, I've seen yeah. it in movies, I, but I've never seen it in real life. I would never, sure. and yeah. had it not been for my strong faith in God and my love for my children, I would have broke. I would, I mean, I broke, but I would have left here. I think that it would have taken me out, you know, and that was the most devastating thing. And then from there, I said, you know what? And then I lost my management, like everything, my agent, I lost everything. I had just gotten it. And I literally overnight, it seemed everybody left me. I lost friends that I've been friends with for 20 years. I had, I, I, I was by myself in a way. I just had my kids and it was, it was the saddest, most devastating time of my life because I couldn't, there was nothing I could say. There was nothing I could do. And anytime I spoke out to try to tell my story, I was deemed a liar because people thought I was a liar from X Factor, which had just happened the prior months. So it was just like, how do I recover from this God? And why am I going through this? Like, why did you take me through this? Like, I, this is my final, this is finally my break. I'm 42 years old. Like, why, why, right. you know? And I just couldn't, right. I couldn't imagine the lesson in that and what it come to teach me. I just couldn't think about it. I understand that. And when I think about it now and everything that I chose to do from that moment, I don't thank God for that moment of having that, that confrontation with her. But I thank God every day for the strength that he gave me to come through it. Right. Like I never would have expected that that would have made me so strong and allowed me to find myself and see myself in the truth of who I am. Right. Not what the media said I was, not who somebody that I love. I love Oprah. Like I was literally, I could bow to her. Like I love her. And she didn't know the story and she went and she said things that weren't true about me and i thought you know what like this could ruin anybody right it could ruin anybody right no matter how talented they are and i when i tell you i've i found the love of my life since then i've fed a hundred thousand over a hundred thousand people i i've done things in my life now i'm a better mom i'm a better person i'm a better friend i'm a better woman and it's because i had to dig in I had to dig in and I had to reach inside myself and I had to build myself spiritually and have a relationship with God that I had never had before mm. in order, in order to overcome it. Wow. And, and I said, God, if, if I had to go do that for you to get my attention, here I am. I submit my all to you. There you go. What do, I, what do you need me to do? What do you right. need me to do? What do you want me to do? And the way that I walk now is so different than I ever walked before. And you know, I've made, like I said, I've made mistakes. I went on a reality show and, I, I was going through also, <laughs> sadly, I was going through like, um, what do you call it when you have a baby and you, you have like the hormones and it's like, um, post crazy time postpartum. Oh, po postpartum. <laughs> I call yeah, it crazy I just time. had a baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had just had a baby. I had a, a five month old baby when I was an X Factor. And by the time I saw Whitney, it was, I was like, I had a seven month old baby and I was bre breastfeeding and I had a three year old and, and I was by myself. I was single. and. Mm. When I think about all of it, it's like, not to make excuses, but forget it. Like how? <laughs> so I, I've, I've gotten help with my health and I, and I strongly urge women to do that. Like our mental health is so, so, so directly connected to our physical health. And if you're right. always tired and you're right. always, and you're, and you're dealing with hormonal imbalances, you're going to be aggressive. You're going to be angry. You can't sleep. You're going to be, those things are going to happen to you. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, if you don't, if you don't have your health in place, the psychologically forget about it you're, you're not going to be there you know right. and 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 i was going through some health challenges um that i actually just recovered from i found this really amazing um health consultant who's helping me with that and i started juicing and doing a lot more um taking a lot more self self-healing right. time and it right. really has affected me and i'm a lot more energetic and my i'm reaching for my goals even more and it's all connected to health and it's all that and i this is the thing that i always especially when i'm over 40 i say make sure you take care of your health you know i'm right. a very i believe in holistic care more than anything else and so i juice and i do coffee enemas and i you know i'm reaching for anything i can to keep myself 
level. Because when you're 20, you have all this energy and you have all these goals and these dreams that you go right. for. And when you hit 40, 50 years old, you're like, whoa, I just want to sleep all day. And that's not good. Right. You still have 40, 50 years ahead of you to keep living. You know, and that's right. the thing that I want to say to women all the time. Like your goals and your dreams don't stop at 40 years old. They don't stop at 50 years old. you got to keep going. It doesn't matter what society says about you at 40 or 50. Right. There's no such thing as freaking retirement if you don't want it. Exactly. Keep going for your goals. If you're not, if you're not, if you have not re reached your goals as artists, as women, as entrepreneurs, then keep going. Like you're, if you're 40 years old, okay, fine, 50 years old, you still got a, like another 40 years inside of you. So right. what we gonna do for all that time? Be sitting in a chair, listening to the world telling us we're old. Like forget right. that. Right? right. Making sure you're eating, you're eating right. Making sure that you have positive people around you. Making sure you have people like you who feed you and lift you up and a team of sisters and a team of women around you that are always mm. encouraging you to reach your goals, not telling you, oh, you're too old. Oh, you didn't reach it. Oh, it's too late. That's all that BS. Nobody wants to hear that. No. We're not here for that. No, we're Anybody not. Nobody got no time for that. You no. Know? So it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we got to keep journaling. We got to keep writing down goals. We got to keep going. And sometimes... Right. I can tell you, I was tired. I was like, I can't do it anymore. Especially when you got something that comes in that powerful and that's really, really there to kill you spiritually, right. emotionally, mentally, physically. It's there to kill. You got to come up out of that and find a new way of doing things. You got to bypass old habits and routines and find a new way of doing things. And you better get to it quick. Right. Get a massage. Go to the sauna. Make sure you're getting facials. Make sure you're doing things to continue to help you be better so that you can sit down and write those goals out and, and pursue them because you have to be in physical health in order to right. do that. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, you're filling me up. And I will tell you, you know, you hit on something. I am a true believer and I preach this all the time is you are only as valuable as you say you are and you think you are. Yeah. So Proverbs yeah. 23, seven says, so a man think is so is he. So, so if, if you yes. are thinking that you're yes. not, if you're thinking, well, I'm not successful yet. I haven't reached yeah. my goals. Then you're yeah. not because yeah. as a man think is so is he. It's not until you start believing and thinking that you're yes. valuable and you're thinking you're successful and that you're talented and you have more to offer to whoever God yes. puts in your path. If you do not believe those things, that's why I'm a true believer in vision boards. I run a vision board live work. Oh, I love those. I love year. them. And, and I love them. I don't think we're going to be able to get our space this year in January, but my daughter gave me a beautiful idea. She said, mom, why won't, why don't you just do a Facebook live vision board workshop for free for all of those people that follow you and show them yes. how you create your vision. And, yes. and so that's what we're going to do. My daughter and I are going to do it yes. together and we're going to do Facebook live because I do do a live workshop in Baton Rouge, Louisiana every year. And we, nice. We keep it down to 35 women and, um, you know, we do brunch and we have mermosas and all that. That's so stuff. nice. We talk That's about so vision, nice. But I think you are talking my, right. you talking, you talking my language. You oh, talking yes. my language. I put January, 2011, I put Simon Cowell's picture on my wall. Wow. I promise you in February, sorry, it was February, 2011. In May, I was standing in front of him. That's crazy the power of the mind and that yes. is the power of a decision. And that's the power of writing down your goals and putting right. it on the wall in front of you. And that, that is my language. Like I believe fully in that. And when it doesn't work for me, I'm just like, okay, God, why, why is this not working? Like if I'm, if I put it on my board and I'm believing and I, then I check my health and I check, okay, am I tired? Like how am I feeling? Like what's my emotional tone today? Am I, am I angry? What am I angry about? I try to tap into that because that actually affects what I manifest. Exactly. Exactly. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how to equate that to where God plays his hand in this. But the reality is God gave us the power through him. He gives us the vision. To, that's right. He gives us the vision. Habakkuk 2 says, take, write the vision down and run with it. Yes. Okay, yeah. so you got to write it down and then you got to run with it. If you ain't got no energy because you're tired and you're sick and you're <laughs> discouraged and you're depressed, you can't run with your vision. You That's know? right. Like, you That's right. So you write it down and run with it. Okay, 
okay, good. I, I got, so for some reason, I don't feel like running today. Let me figure out what that is. Let me get my vitamin and take up. Let me just figure. And that's a very hardcore thing because we got radiation. We got 5G. We got all this stuff that's zapping us of our energy. We got the right. media. We got all this stuff that wants to come in and stop you from being able to see. Okay. So yes. we know that, know that we all live in the matrix. If you know that. Then you know that this is a physical universe that ain't real and it's right. what you want it to be. Right. If you operate in that and you understand that and you get your energy, because people say, wow, Stacey, like, how do you keep going? Okay, good. So here's some tips. I'm telling you how. Right. Okay. Writing down that vision and putting it on a board and that, I believe in that, sis. I, I believe in that so much. Like, I I'm with too. you on that. That's power. Yes. And if a lot of women understand that, they can create into their universe what it is that they want and need. Yes. And you know, and I actually incorporated that in my create your life 30 day journal and lifestyle workbook that I published during COVID because what God, nice. what, something I had been working on for a year and a half, because what basically what had happened, Stacy, is I go to this workshop every year that I put on live and I hand everyone, you know, some type of little journal or, or, you know, PDF type put together. And I will tell them to journal their be, do, and have like your be, put yourself in it. I want to be yes. and what yes. you want to do and what you want to have. And I, and I'm always yes. talking about journaling. And then I just, woke up one day and I was like, why am I buying journals to give to these women? Why don't I give them my own journal? Create your own. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so I did. I actually created and look, I'll show it to you. Nice. I'll send it to you, Stacey. But it's create. Oh, life. nice. I love it. Yeah. So I love it. 30 day devotional and lifestyle workbook. And at the beginning, I talk about decluttering your mind and decluttering your space because we can't yes. think and see clearly with clutter around us, even decluttering yes. your car, you know, and I truly yes. believe yes. that the first thing that you do in the morning, the first thing that you do in the morning is you have to open yourself up to a positive, positive mindset. And in order yes. to do that, you have to declutter your, or your environment because you can't, yes. see it. you can't think clearly. So I talk about declutter. I talk about vision board, and then I take you on a 30 day prayer and, and, and saying your affirmations for 30 days for those that are saying, Oh, I don't know how to pray. I basically say, read your prayer on day one. I'm praying with you. And so yes. I do that for three day for 30 days. And what inspired that's me, that's what inspired me to do it was basically just why am I giving, why am I buying journals for these women when I can just, you know, hand of mine. And so that's what started on that. But I truly believe in vision boards because it is creating that vision that you already is in yes. here. It's in here, yes. but you have yes. to put it before you. And the key to that is to not show it to those that are not part of that same vision. It's called counter intention. You have an intention to do something. You have a plan to go somewhere, do something, achieve something. And then somebody comes in with a counter intention against you. So make sure you don't share all of that. No. Because your intention might not be the same as somebody else's and they want to stop you from reaching your goals. I want to, I want to commend you on the be, do, have, because I know about that. I'm very big on being, doing, and having this. Okay. Right. So a lot of people don't have that. Like a lot of people don't understand, well, I want to have a car. I want to, I want to have a house. Okay. Well, what do you have to do in order to receive that house? Right. right. And then what, what being this, do you need to, the first thing is what being this am I going to take on? For me, I chose, I want to be an artist. That's my beingness. I want right. to sing. Right. Okay. So in order for me to sing, I, I need to maybe get an agent or whatever those things are, the doingness of the, and then I go sing and then I get a check. So it's being the singer, right. doing the job of singing and then getting the check. So right. I love that being and doing and having, because a lot of people need to know the exact sequence of that. You know, I, I yes. ask my daughter all the time. I don't ask her what it is she wants to do. I say, who do you want to be? What do you want to be? What, 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 what goals do you want to achieve? What beingness do you want to take on to achieve those goals? Right. And I talk so about that. You to the it's, the, it's the desire. It's the desire of your heart. And, you know, and one yes. thing, Steve Harvey talked about this. I actually went to see him he spoke at the 10 X conference in Miami a couple of years ago. And it's, yeah, so, it's so crazy because, um, Grant and Elena Cardone put on that conference and I kind of, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I know Elena Cardone actually, um, through a friend, yeah. I just introduced her to, um, connected her with Joy Villa, by the way, last week, because I, I Joy's thinking about doing some type of empowerment thing for women, but I went to this conference 
completely out of my comfort zone. Normally I would be like finding a friend, right? Who wants to go? Who wants to go? And I actually yeah. found a friend in Dallas that really wanted to go, but she couldn't. She had to be in LA. She was going to be on Fox and Friends. And so she couldn't do it. And so you know what I did? Three days before the conference, I was like, Psh, I'm going. So I told my husband, yeah. I said, I'm going to Miami. He said, you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going to Miami. I'm going to this conference because for some reason I feel led to go. And, yeah. you know, I'm not one on, you know, investment in real estate and all these things that Grant Cardone is in, but I knew that I needed to be there for some reason, for some type of fulfillment and, and what I was going for. And so I did, I flew to Miami, stayed in the hotel by myself, took an Uber, went nice. to the conference. I will tell you while I was in the New Orleans airport, ready to board for Miami, I met a girl, how crazy is this? Met a girl on the bus where I parked. She's by herself and she's going to she the She was conference. going as well. That's, I love it. So we sat it. together, we sat together during the conference and we still, now we follow each other on social media. She lives nice, an hour nice. from me. And it was real interesting nice. because while I was actually in, I was catching an Uber, I met a gentleman from Nigeria and he came outside and he said, do you want to share a car in his little Nigerian accent that he has is so cool. And, and I was like, sure. And so I jumped in the back of an Uber in Miami with this strange man from Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, a story that I would tell my husband and say, what are right. you doing? But I'm going to tell you, you know, I feel that when you have a piece about what you're doing, I think God gives you discernment yes. and intuition. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. I stepped outside of my comfort zone. So I get in the back of the car with this guy in Uber, Uber from Nigeria and we go to the 10x conference and on the way we introduced ourselves to each other and I tell him my name is Sherry and he says oh I actually have a friend in the states in Atlanta named Sherry Riley we'll come to find out Sherry Riley used to work for Usher and she had wrote oh, a book wow. and Usher was wrote the forward in her book Oh, wow. He, he gets her on the phone, puts her on speaker. We have a conversation with Sherry on the way to 10X. How no crazy way. is this? That is crazy. Sherry ends up being on my show. We follow each other on social media. So she's been on my show. I mean, just to tell you how the stream of things can happen. Like, yes, how they connect. And, and it's crazy because to this day, he's called the Uban King and in Nigeria. And we follow each other on social media and if, if he goes live, I can hit request to go live. And he puts me live in Nigeria with his following. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. That's crazy. So we still follow that each other crazy. for years. But to show you how God can actually just introduce you to people and take you on different journeys and how we've met, yes. you know, is, yes. is, is incredible to me. But you hit on something when you said, the dark times that you had actually gone through and you don't yeah. actually talk about them. But what I feel in my heart, Stacy, is you have to talk about them because it teaches people that you can be at the yeah. lowest of your low and you can yes. actually and you can survive with your faith. Absolutely. That's actually your testimony. Whereas you might think your testimony is what you may have survived before. Your testimony yes, no, is being up here and being tormented by the enemy and staying up here, yeah. no matter that's what. That's right. That's your testimony. That's right. That that's is true. your testimony. I really appreciate it. And I, I, res I respect and honor that. I think, you know, it has been, it, it was, you know, it's hard. You know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. And especially when you talk about the mega superstar Whitney Houston and people think, oh, you rubbed to the wrong way or, you know, and you said you wanted the truth of some of that. And I'll give you the truth. The truth of some of it was, she was dating Ray J at the time and Ray and I had known each other since he was like a young boy. Like yeah. I was best friends and I'm still friends with Brandy. She's a phenomenal artist. I knew Brandy when she was 14 years old and Ray must've been, I don't know, 10 at the time, you know, so I've, I've stayed in the house with them. I've had an ongoing relationship with their family and they're really beautiful people. They've always been very kind to me. I spent Christmas with them. I did a, actually a, a duet with Brandy. We sang a song together. Nice. So um, when I saw him at the club, it was, it was loud in the club and she saw him and like communicating with me and she didn't know what he was talking about. And so there was a bit of jealousy there or there was, you know, she kind of got upset. But before that happened, we had, we were talking for like hours. Like we were talking about motherhood and the fact that I had known her. She, she had pulled me on stage 
to sing with her and page wow. six in the post had written about I was starring in Footloose and page six Liz Smith wrote the title Whitney Houston's uh, fan of Footloose star okay so we had had some history so I was reminding her of that history we, had, we were talking for hours before that so there was this beautiful transition and a beautiful we, we were dancing and talking and all that and then obviously by the time the media gets it it's like this whole other dark thing of course you know what i mean, I mean right you know what i'm saying that of course. really didn't happen and there's other right. details there but the reality is it wasn't it wasn't like we I, there was no altercation it was no you know fits, there was none of that you know what i mean right. I, was, I was standing there and said I, you're my idol i would never you know disrespect you you know what i mean so right. it just it became something and there was other details that i'm gonna put in the book <laughs> yeah um but you're right it's it's it is important to tell the story it is important to to share the journey and because if you don't it, what's the purpose of going through it you know exactly. you go through it to share it with with people and you know you're right it is it is my testimony i just sometimes out of respect for her i don't talk about it as much because it is her and she did pass away and i do honor respect her as an artist right. um but it is part of my story and i do have a right to tell it you do you're right you absolutely do. Yeah. And you hit on something right there when you said, um, and we'll use just Oprah as an example, because in media, it happens all the time. But we'll talk about Oprah because she's such a big figure. We put Oprah on such a pedestal, right? Because she's so talented yes. and she's reached such yes. success and such high levels. Yes. And, you know, everybody says yes. Oprah, everything Oprah touches turns to gold. But we also know from what she has shared in the world that that's not how she grew up. You know, it's not right. how she grew up. But so, so for her to take something without going to both sources, or maybe she could yeah. go to Whitney, but she could go to the source at hand and say, listen, this is what is perceived because perception yes. is not necessarily yes. reality, right? So this yes. is what has yes. been perceived by those that want to cause you harm because people are yeah. jealous and you're going to have naysayers and haters for the rest yeah. of your life. But Yes. instead of coming to you and saying let's hear your side and setting you down and let's tell the story and what happened you know what she's never done that in all due respect to her she has never done that and i do feel like that's something that when i when i write my, my book i'm hoping that she will bring me on i'm hoping that she will read my book and i'm hoping that she will allow me to tell really what happened you know pat houston her sister-in-law went on oprah mm -hmm. and said that i was stalking whitney in the club Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to give you this because you're an amazing person. I'm going to give you this and I don't want to, you know, really dwell on this and I don't, you know, I'm not no, interested in the backlash from it. But Whitney was literally dancing with me. Like we were dancing together, like dancing, yeah. like, like, you know, like yeah. truly like so close and dancing and like having such a good time. And her sister-in-law completely went off and told a lie. Like, it was just a lie. I was not stalking her in the club. She was literally standing with me and we were dancing together and like talking and like face, like really close and like intimate and it was beautiful, okay? Right. And so for her sister to turn around and say I was stalking her from a distance, who knows what her sister thought what was going on? You know what I mean? I don't know what she thought, but for her to say I was stalking her to make me look like a, the bad guy really, really damaged me. Right. And and to go on to go on Oprah and insinuate that and right. then Oprah never ever have the conversation with me I do I do find that very unfair I do I do find because she never she never sat down to talk to me to find out my side of it and again there's stuff that I'm holding back that I'm not saying because I do want to write it in my book and I do want the truth to be fully told but I'll tell you Good. it was just it was the 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 way that it was told wasn't true it wasn't true it right. wasn't it wasn't um it was it had to be this other sensationalized thing that it wasn't if you hear the truth it's, it's not, not as exciting it's not as exciting to hear the truth right it's, it's easier <laughs> and it's more exciting to try to ruin somebody from it yeah right? but yes. us as christian women know that you are, can't ruin what god has anointed you really can't. can't ruin what he's anointed. You really can't. And, and this is my plea. And I will plea this. And I don't know Oprah. I've never met Oprah. I think it would be amazing to meet her. I think that she has such a platform for not just women, but for everyone. But let's talk about just being women for a minute. And let's yes. talk about being yes. Christians. And let's talk about loving God. The right yes. thing for her to do. And I would plead to her yes. to do it. And, and if I... 
and I'm, again, I'm going to perception. If my perception is reality, it's correct. And, and what I believe Oprah to be, and, and again, it's just perception because I've never met her. I believe that she will reach out to you. Maybe she never felt that it was necessary and maybe she will. Feel it's necessary yeah well but god I, pray, I pray that she does well god will lead her if, if it's the right thing and it's what's supposed to do there's nothing yeah. you can do i can say or anyone can put out there it will be impressed upon her it'll be impressed upon right. her right that's so, true that that's will be true. her life her control her impression and her intuition to reach out to you so we'll just set in faith as sisters in christ that yeah that, like, that will happen but I believe you writing your book and telling your story is incredible, Stacey. I feel such a power from that because you're going to be able to bring so many people. You're going to be telling your story, but you know what you're actually going to be doing? God's going to be showing people, not just you, because it's not about the messenger, right? It's not the, it's about That's the right. message. The star isn't That's Stacey. Right. The star is the message that Stacey has to tell. That's true. Right. That's very, so very true. Your book is going to be that messenger through you because God uses people to tell what he needs to say and what he needs to tell and what he has to show. Your, your book will be that message to get out and you're going to bring people to God and open, plant yes. that seed, plant that seed to shine some light in that book. And you'll, you'll just be telling your story, but it can be used yes. in hundreds of different ways. And when the book comes out, we'll have you back on the show to talk about the book. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, that would we'll be We'll have great. a book club. We'll have a book club about yeah. it. Yeah. We'll invite women, we'll invite women yeah, to talk you. about it on social media. And we could actually even actually have a Facebook live book club. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, that to would do, be amazing. To do some type of launch in that book club and bring these women on. And we'll have the Real Girl Talk community come on and just talk about how the book has changed them and what they've learned from it. That would be incredible incredible that would that would be i would love that thank you so much well, that's Stacey, so nice thank you i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart you are such a light you're absolutely gorgeous thank you and i will tell that's you that's so sweet thank the you. light from within just glows on you like you're just oh thank you like you have so much light and beauty on the inside thank it you so much out on the outside thank you so much um, thank you so much and, and i'm juicing is really good too so we're gonna <laughs> You see, I was going to say, I had, I had a green juice this morning. That might be a little helping me with my glow. <laughs> well, you scared me. You scared me a little bit on the coffee enema, but I will do the juicing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But you know what? I, I kind of felt the same way when I started it, but I, I love them. They, you know, they're really helpful. And, and, oh, you know, I went to Grant Cardone's um, conference this year. Actually, oh, nice. In Vegas. It was excellent. It was right before COVID like really hit. So did you meet you Elena? Know, I, I do. I know. I know, I know Grant and Elena Cardone personally Good. for the last probably 15 years. Nice. They had my baby, my, my firstborn's um, baby shower at their home in LA. Um, I, I do know them personally. They're very kind and, and very yeah, smart she, and very driven and they're she, very inspirational. Yeah, she's great. As a matter yeah. of fact, I texted her last week. I highlighted her book on my Amazon. Um, I'm an Amazon influencer and I have my Amazon live store and I highlighted her book and she texted me. She's so sweet. She really is. Yes. What's incredible is we have a mutual friend that used to be my neighbor. You know, she's from New Orleans. So oh, we're wow. girls and Grant is from Lafayette. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so we we were introduced several years ago and, and we just stayed friends and she's great. She, she really nice. is. Nice. Now tell nice. everybody. Well, you're amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. And before I go, before I go, I want to thank you awesome. for having the courage and the strength and the endurance and all that you're doing and thank inspiring you. people. It's not easy. Okay. You right. make it look super, super, super easy, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and so, so good for you for Thank succeeding you. and, and overcoming things that, you know, most moms would obviously no mom would want to go through, but right. you are doing great. Right. Thank and you. you're very insp inspirational. And thank you for flowing me power and allowing me this moment to come in and Thank you for the validation that you've given me. It takes Absolutely. it takes such a beautiful soul to do that for another woman. And I really appreciate that in you. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. I feel God led. And thank you, Stacey. And before we go off, I want you to tell everybody, of course, where we can find you. Okay. So on Instagram, it's I at I am Stacy Francis. And it's Stacy S-T-A-C-Y F-R-A-N-C-I-S. And on on Twitter, it's Stacy Francis. And 
uh, on Facebook, I think it's just Stacey Francis, the singer or something like that. Yes, yeah, Stacey okay. Francis, the singer. Now, so, what projects, yeah. what projects can we expect out of you going forward? What should we be looking for? You know what? Well, you know what? Um, I just, as I mentioned, I'm actually in the middle of writing my book now. Um, nice. I'm hoping that I'm going to be done um, early part of the year. That'll be, that'll, hoping that'll be done. I'm just, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing a project with the London Philharmonic Orchestra. We had already closed that deal and things were moving forward and then COVID hit. So it's kind of been a bit of a challenge um, because everything is still locked down. They, they went back into lockdown. Uh, I think they actually just came out like the beginning of this yeah. the month. So I'm still working musically on that, you know, on, on my music and creating. And I wrote a song called We Stand Together, which um, I released a few months ago. And that was a COVID song actually. So you can find that on iTunes. It's called We Stand Together and there's a video on YouTube. So I would love it if you're followers to go check that out. Absolutely. I'm going to check that out today. For yeah, it's sure. called We Stand Together. Yeah. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah. I love you, girl. Thank you so much. Thank much love to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in all the way through Real Girl Talk. Make sure you subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you happen to have iTunes, would you do me a huge favor and leave us a rating and review of the show? That's the way that we get this message out to more and more people around the world. And you know, giving us a review and rating, something good is going to come back your way. Plus, I know you're the type of person that wants others to live their best life. So can you copy this link, share it to your friends, share it on social media? Remember, people need to be inspired. They need to have tips. They need to have business ideas more than ever right now. And I know that you can help me on this mission. Thank you again so much. If you want to be a supporter of the show, go back to realgirltalkpodcast.com. Click be a supporter. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being a part of Real Girl Talk podcast. And until next week, keep your encouragement tank full, your faith in God, and create your beautiful life.